Hey guys, GreekGamer34 here. So today I'm back and I built a sequential BCD to binary input buffer for like a calculator or maybe you're building a combination lock or something. So that's what it could be used for. So basically what does it do? So if we enter this in decimal, this is what we'll get out in decimal on the other side. So if we enter a 2, we get a 2 out. If we enter a 5, we get a 25. And then if we enter a 6, we get a 256. So basically it's taking the number on the right, shifting it over by 1 every time we get a new number, and then adding that new number. Well, shifting over by 1 in decimal is m multiplying by 10. But in binary, if we shift over by 1, that's on only multiplying by 2. So how do we do this? So basically, the algorithm goes, you get a register, and that's going to equal your BCD input plus that register again. So just like this, you get your BCD input coming into an adder, and that goes through. And you save that. Um, then you're going to say that A gets 2 times a plus 8 times a. Well, why do we do 2 times a plus 8 times a? Well, a times 10 is equal to a times 2 plus 8. And 10, if you know, is 1010 zero, zero in binary. And 2 and 8 make up that, that 10 in binary. So we also know that multiplying by 2 is equal to 1 left shift, and multiplying by 8 is equal to 3 left shifts. So we don't have to build a multiplier to do this. All we have to do is shift over some numbers and add them together again. So how does this work? Well this is that previous value being coming up into our adder and only taking our 4-bit BCD in. Then that 4-bit BCD in gets added to that previous value with this adder and then the output gets branched two ways. The top way gets left shifted by 1 on the adder. As you see there is no 0th bit, there's only the first bit here. So it's left shifted by 1. And then if you see on the bottom, it had to be bust to be left shifted by 3. This is So there we have 1, 2, 3, and then here it is right here, the times 8. So it's taking the number, multiplying it by 2 up to on the top, multiplying it by 8 on the bottom, adding those results together. And then right here, that gets bust to this line, comes back around, and gets added or saved into this register on this clock pulse. Then that'll come back through round and accept our new BCD number. Then we clock pulse it again and it gets saved and then again and again and again and again. So let's see this work. So I used the example 2, 5, and 6 here to get 256. Well, 2 and then 25 and 56. 256. So let's do that here. So if I flip the 2, clock it, I get a 2 as an output. If I then enter a 5, I get 25 as an output. 16 plus 8 is 24, plus 1 is 25. And then it'll be really easy to see if it gets 256 correct, because that's just going to be one bit on, and that's the ninth bit. So let's see if the ninth bit is on. And there it is. So it works. It works good. It works well. So basically, I built this in Minecraft to demonstrate how it works more physically, to see to, sh to show you guys to get an idea of what it's doing and then I coded this in VHDL also so I'll have that and then it actually running on the FPGA coming up next alright guys so here we are in Vivado and I have opened the source code for the VHDL code that I wrote for that program or for the uh, BCD to binary so as we can see here I'm using two libraries now. I'm using the standard logic and I'm using numeric.std or underscore std um, and that's so I can do addition stuff on on some unsigned uh, values. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to get a data in which is our 4-bit BCD. We're going to get a clock, a reset. We need to send output towards the LEDs for the number that we have and then the seg out is just going to be displaying on the seven segment display the state we're in for bug testing and easily and easily seeing what's going on. So um, right here we have our type state. So we have two states going, three states: state zero, state one, state two, and then we have six here uh, temp registers. So these are terrible names, I know, but I just needed to make some generic values real quick so I could test this to see if this works. Because I used to have 
a larger state machine that would get this done, but I just changed the algorithm slightly and made it smaller. So it starts with our first process statement here that takes in the reset and the clock, and it says if the reset is true, then take the current state and send it to state 2, and state 2 is the reset state, and then it also is forcing the output to 0. So if we come real quick down to state 2, we see here, when state 2, send all these things to 0 here, and then go to the 0th state after that. Um, but then it says else if if there's a clock tick event and the clock is equal to one so that means if you have a pulse or like a an edge detection and that edge is positive that's what the one means then we're going to output the register tempd and then we're going to advance to the next state so tempd is kind of what if we want to send something to the output in our state machine we'll send it to tempd and then it'll be sent to the output every clock cycle so in our main process statement, we're taking in our current state, and we're saying in state zero, we're going to say a temporary register gets temp A, which is 14 down to zero and zero. And what this is doing here is it's taking the first 14, um, excuse me, it's taking yeah the first 14 bits of temp A, saying those are good, excluding tossing out the 15th bit and then adding a bit to the 0th position, basically left shifting by 1. Then temp E is doing the same thing to temp A, except left, sh left shifting by 3, and that's how we get the times 2 or times 8. And then in temp F, we're adding the times 2 and times 8 to get our times 10. And then we're displaying that register at line at this line right here. We're displaying that output. Then in state Oh, and then out we're right here we're outputting the number one on the display. That should be the numbers. Yeah, yeah, the states are reversed a little bit, but basically, yeah, that's what's going on. And then uh, state one is going to say temp B is going to get data, and our data our data is only three down to zero. So we need to send this this four bit vector needs to overwrite a 16-bit value. Well, temp B is always going to have 0 in it unless it's being having written data to. So we're just going to overwrite the first four bits of temp B because those are the f only four bits are coming from data. So that's how we do that without getting any errors. And then right here we're saying take our value that was shifted by 10 up here, multiplied by 10, that came from up here, and add to it our new value. So if we entered a 1, it wouldn't have anything previously to multiply or anything, so nothing would come out of this state, and then we get here it output a 1. Then when we get to this state, it output is 10. And then when we get to this state, it'll add our new input, so if you entered a 1 again and then clicked it, it'll output 101 in this state. And that's basically how this thing works. So now I'll show you guys it actually being implemented on the FPGA. Alright guys, so here we are with the FPGA. Um, so state 2 is being displayed right now. And that means it's in the reset state, which is the button down here is reset. The button in the middle here is to advance states. So we get 0, 1. So I have, these are my data switches, so I'm only, I only have these four for my data. And so let's, let's do this. So we're going to start, we're going to reset, oops, let's get to state 0. Okay, we're going to reset. And then we're going to enter, since in the example in the video, in the Minecraft video, I did 256, we're going to do that here, so I'll we'll enter a 2, enter a 5, we got 16 plus 4, which is 24, plus 1 is 25, and I'll enter a 6, and then we'll see we get 256. So this will work for up to a 16-bit value, which is like 16,384 or something like that. You can basically keep doing that. Let's make, um, we can make 1,023. Let's do that. So we'll enter 1, 0, Two, three. 
and there's 1023 because that's 1024 right there. So there's it working. I hope you guys liked. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already.